Welcome to the most incredible intro trivia challenge, where we separate the elites from the noobs. Ready to play? Which game was the first to feature regenerating health? Think about it, and I'll catch you after the intro. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's like a med kit for your mind. Speaking of med kits, let's talk about video game healing. Are you tired of having to go to the doctor every time you get shot in the face? Are you sick of having to manage your supply of healing sprays or green herbs? Wouldn't it be nice if you could just get shot, sit down, and feel as good as new? Well, now you can with Modern FPS. With Modern FPS, even the most massive internal bleeding can be solved with a minute behind this grenade-proof credenza. Shot 20 times? Silly bullets! Don't worry, all better. Thanks, Modern FPS. Modern FPS. Warfare so realistic, you'll want to enlist. Warfare depicted in game may not actually reflect realistic wartime scenarios. Seriously, though, most people think regenerating health is a new concept that started with Halo. It's not. In fact, Halo didn't even have regenerating health. It was a regenerating shield, but I can understand the confusion. No, the first ever game with regenerating health was the 1984 RPG Hydlide, a title beloved by game both then and now. I hate Hydlide. I hate this game so much. Hydlide. Just saying the name gives you a gag reflex like you're about to puke. So did you get the most incredible intro trivia challenge? Right? No. Other acceptable answers would include Faceball 2000 for being the first ever FPS with health regen, and The Getaway for using context clues like limping and blood spatter to indicate your character's level of health, something that would become the standard for franchises like Call of Duty. And that was the breaking point. When Call of Duty started to do it, that's when the hate started to pile on, because for as modern as its warfare may claim to be, regenerating health just isn't realistic. Or maybe it is. Is the ability to regen really that far-fetched for humans? Plus, what about medkits? Let's be honest here, that whole health pack concept wasn't much more realistic. That being said, is it a trope more accurate than regenerating health? Prepare to be healed, my theorists, as we take our positions on the front lines of science. For most of you, myself included, the thought that humans can have regenerating health seems like a crazier idea than trying to take on battle toads in two-player mode. But here's a mind blow for you. Humans can already regenerate. Believe it! The first and most common example is your skin. Your skin is constantly replenishing itself, as evidenced by that dandruff on your shoulder right now. Uh, might wanna brush it off? Yeah, there you go. Avoid dark clothes in the future. This is called complete regeneration, where the tissue isn't injured and the new tissue is as good as new. But as you know, your skin can also repair itself. Say, when you get a cut, or to use our gaming example, when you get shot. This is called incomplete regeneration, as the repair doesn't identically match what was before. You can always see the scar. Well, whoopity dee doo I hear you thinking. When Soap gets shot, he needs a lot more than a skin patch to heal all Wolverine style, and you're right. But we're far from done. The liver is another organ of the body that'll grow back if part of it's cut off. In fact, it could regenerate if as little as 25% of it is left remaining. Pair that other 75% with some onions, fry it all up, and you got yourself a delicious regenerating snack. Ooh, actually, I've never tried liver and onions before. That Doug episode scarred me for life. But get this, even our fingers can grow back. Seriously, if children get the tip of their finger cut off, it's often capable of fully regenerating. Don't try that at home, though. You just might want to trust me on this one. And the crazy thing is, it was generally thought that we lost this ability between the ages of 7 and 11, but recent reports from the last few years have shown doctors regenerating the tips of fingers in as little as 4 weeks for adults as old as 60. And we're learning a lot from mice, who never lose the ability to grow back digits. For this reason, researchers at New York University chose to study what enabled mice to grow their fingers back. What they discovered was that stem cells found underneath the fingernail and a family of proteins called the WNT signaling network control fingertip regeneration. Stem cells are basically neutral cells. You know how you have 
have blood cells, skin cells, brain cells. These are called differentiated cells because their structure is specialized for its function. Say, for instance, uh, long arms and branches and nerve cells that help send electrical signals through the body and brain. Stem cells are the opposite, waiting for direction from the body as to what sort of cell they should become. So, by manipulating the WNT pathway in the mice, researchers were able to stimulate the stem cells to regenerate the bone and tissue beyond just fingertips. They believe that mastering the manipulation of this pathway is the answer to full limb regeneration in mammals. And NYU isn't the only group working on this. Another team of scientists at Tufts University believe that even more regeneration questions can be answered by looking at the electrical signals sent between cells. One of the animals they worked with was the Xenopus tadpole. This tadpole has the ability to grow back its tail if it's cut off in the first week of its life. After that week, though, it loses that ability. By surgically altering the way an older tadpole cells communicate, they were able to turn that regenerative ability back on. And a tadpole that shouldn't have been able to grow back its tail did. And that was just the beginning. Like the twisted scientist from South Park, the Tufts team's been able to create flatworms with multiple heads, grown working eyes on the bellies of tadpoles, even proven that you can slice off a worm's head, regrow it, and it still has its old memories intact. You heard that right. It was decapitated, regrew its head, and still had its original memories. I wonder if the worm remembered scientists slicing off its head. Jeez. Science, man. It gets dark sometimes. And this isn't just a stupid worm, its nervous system is actually closer to ours than you would think, but probably the most impressive accomplishment so far has been the regrowth of an amputated frog's leg. Unlike the tadpole that was capable of regeneration but later lost the ability, the frog they were working with never had that regenerative ability in the first place, just like humans. And the leg is a much more complex body part, so we are getting closer, and recently this team has moved on to working with mammals. together. NYU and Tufts are unlocking the science behind human regeneration, but even if they succeeded in enabling humans to grow back organs and limbs, it would still take months, or even years, for these tissues to fully form. Call of Duty soldiers don't have that long to wait, I mean, the magical bulletproof desk won't hold out forever now. Well, actually it probably would because of reasons, but we need to accelerate the healing process. And that's where this guy comes in, the axolotl salamander. Isn't he a cutie? These guys are the wolverines of the animal world. Well, wolverines are the wolverines of the animal world, but I mean, you get what I'm saying. They have superhero-like healing abilities, okay? The axolotl can regrow entire limbs in a matter of weeks. How? Well, scientists know it has to do with immune cells called macrophages. Humans have a similar set of cells in their body, but these macrophages behave differently when the salamander is injured versus when we're injured. So long story short, there's a lot of promising advances in this field, but we're still working on it. The moral of this little tour through regeneration research is that humans have the biological mechanisms in place to make it happen. And while, yes, regenerating health may be laughable in the so-called modern warfare games up to this point, the new installment, Advanced Warfare, is set to take place in 2054, 40 years from now seems reasonable. And even if we're not at the point of full-on rapid regeneration by that point, there's always lab-grown organs, which are actually becoming pretty commonplace, much to the delight of doctors and Halloween home decorators across the country. Or, I suppose, we could always use a health pack. Now, let's be honest here, the whole health pack concept has never been much more realistic than the cod regeneration. Since when could a roll of gauze or a can of Neosporin instantly heal someone after they've been mauled by a ravenous zombie dog. Oh, I lost my arm! Here, let me dab it with this antiseptic moist towelette. It'll be as good as new. I don't think so. If you got shot, there was nothing in that med kit that was going to get you back up on your feet in seconds. Or at least there wasn't until this year. Behold X-Stat. The X stands for extreme. Actually, I have no idea what the X stands for, but I thought extreme made it sound cooler. It's a modified syringe that injects specially coated sponges into a wound. The sponges are treated with a substance that helps stop bleeding. And as they soak up the blood, they expand to 10 times their size, which plugs the wound and stops all forms of bleeding by exerting pressure from inside of the gunshot. In 15 seconds, you're as good as new. Well, 
in a manner of speaking. You do still have a bullet inside your body and are probably in a lot of pain, but hey, you're no longer at risk of bleeding out, and this is brand new. It was just approved by the FDA in April and has started to roll out to medics in the US military. But the best part of the story is that the creator got the idea while wandering through a Williams Sonoma. You know that overpriced kitchen store in the mall with free samples like 20% of the time? It's wild, right? Now that I think about it, the actual best part of this story is the fact that we now have a better way to save the lives of our soldiers. But the Williams Sonoma thing, that was a cool little tidbit, right? It was, it was, it was kind of funny. So there you have it. Video game healing isn't quite as full of BS as we've all been assuming. And at least for the time being, health kits are still superior to regenerating health. So point to all you loyal Doom, Unreal, and Duke Nukem players out there. Feel free to use that in your debates as to why your games are so much better than COD. At least for the next 30 years until regenerating health research catches up. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching! Hey, you guys liked this last time, so let's try it again. An opportunity to feature a channel I think you guys might really enjoy. This time, I'm calling out Science Friction. You know how some episodes of Game Theory are dedicated to how video game logic applies to real life? Or how real life science applies to gaming stuff? Kinda like this episode. Well, if you like those sorts of videos, Science Friction is for you. Exploring all the science behind making you into a real life comic book superhero. The host, Rusty, actually helped a lot with the research for this episode, so a special thanks to him. I recommend clicking here and then preparing to waste your afternoon binge-watching his stuff. There you have it, that's all for today. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to infuse myself with lizard blood and see if there's a way to score some samples at Williams Sonoma. Oh, I'll eat your free food alright, but don't you expect me to pay for it, cause that ain't never gonna happen. Seven bucks for a cup of hot cocoa ain't cutting it for me.